Hey folks, Dan Freer here, the Mortgage Update. Today is June, shoot, I forget what day it is, and my watch is dead. It's Monday, June 15th. So, let's get at it. What happened today? I'm in my backyard right now, sorry it's so late. I just flew in last night, and um, just wanted to bring everybody up to speed for the end of the day. So, uh, Mortgage Back Securities had not a very good day today. But the biggest thing going on right now, like I said, is it's not like unemployment numbers. Uh, some numbers came out last week. We're going to throw those aside. Um, other factors came in. We're going to throw those aside. The markets were moved last week, as we all saw, when the Federal Reserve came in and said, we're going to continue to just keep buying and buying and buying more expect securities and other bonds. Um, and they were buying treasury bonds. And what that did, it was stabilizing the markets in regards to um, loans and other debt, like credit card debt and so forth. So they were trying to stabilize that market. A weird thing came out today, and the Fed now is saying they're going to start buying corporate bonds. And I'm going to really have to dig in on this one because I don't get this part of it. They're saying they're trying to uh, keep the liquidity in the markets and all that other stuff. But the concern is, what corporation are they buying the bonds from? And, you know, we all think of the, the deep state and all this other stuff. Why would they buy be buying one corporate bond, uh, one company's corporate bonds, and not another's? So you can see some tank. So you get what I'm saying. Let's, let's say the government stepped in and said, we're going to buy up uh, stocks of a particular company. Well, who's that company? Why are they getting their stocks purchased by the government, you know, increasing the stock prices and so forth? So this is something I really got to look into. My biggest concern is, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal opportunity right now for those out there that are looking to buy or refinance their home. An amazing opportunity. I mean, I've done this for 32 years now. Rates have never been this low. Guys, it's nuts. Look at your credit cards. You think a fantastic rate is if you get 8% or something like that on your credit card. Or you get a car loan, it's 2.99% for five years. Guys, you're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars for 30 years. Basically leverage that money. I'm going to give you what I'm, I do personally. Um, here's my thought behind the stock market, or I'm, I'm sorry, my, my home and my, my personal mortgage. And then we'll get on to what's going on today or what happened today in the economic news for the rest of the week. But here's the way I look at it. Normally, the stock market's giving you 6 or 8% gains. And I know you take out the blip of the last three or four months, and you're having a compounded rate of return well, over the last three or four years has been much more than that. But let's just say for, generally, uh, and I apologize, I'm in my backyard right now, and there's, there's airplanes flying by. Uh, but let's say generally the stock market's yielding, let's go in the middle between 6 and 8, 7%. Okay, so you can invest money and get a 7% return. Or you can get a mortgage at three and a half. Okay, think about this for a second. Why would you put down a ton of money on if you're buying a home? So let's say you're buying a four hundred thousand dollar home, and you're saying oh, I'm going to put down you know fifty thousand dollars, sixty, eighty thousand dollars. Why don't you leverage the money? <clears throat> I don't honestly. I don't care what you do. I'm just saying as financial as a financial advisor piece of my puzzle. I, I have a degree in economics, and I moved to Chicago years ago. I wanted to be a trader down on on the at the board, uh, but I got into the the mortgage market and then starting to track bonds and all this other stuff. I took an interest in it and, and continued that career. But if you can borrow money at three and a half percent and invest it and get a 7% return, why wouldn't you? And it's liquid. Meaning if you need that cash tomorrow, you sell the stock and you can have the money wired to your account the next day. If you put all this money into your home, if you need to get the money back out, you have to either one, sell it, or two, refinance it. It takes time and there's costs involved. So. I'm a huge proponent of using the markets and using rates and using tax consequences and everything else to leverage my money, okay? I don't want you to bite off more than you can chew, but again, you throw the mar money in the market, you get a 7% return or more in many cases, and yes, it can drop, so can your house value. So let's say you put a ton of money down in your house and the house value drops. You just lost that money. 
So why not put money in the markets and let it work for you or investments or even this? Why are you putting more money down on your home that you're going to get a rate of return or interest rate of three and a half, four percent when you're paying 10 or 15 or 20 percent on your credit cards? Just something to think about. So let's get on to what happened today in the markets. So let's get to it. So what I want to talk about today is let's scan back and say, here's where the market ended. Let me give you the chart for the day. Eight minus eight. No big deal. Let's scan through what happened during the day. Empire uh, manufacturing surveys come in and the, again, these aren't figures that I'm really paying attention to because of this, but some numbers came in shocking. Um, was reported at minus 2% for the month of June, which was better than the expectations of minus 30. So they're expecting the manufacturing survey to drop 30. That's, that's a huge move. And I won't explain that number in detail here. I don't want to bore you to death. But if you're expecting a fraction or a two-tenth of a percent drop, or you're expecting a 30% drop, and you get a two-tenths percent drop, pretty good number. So I think a lot of people are getting this wrong, um, but there's more to come because this Corona thing is starting to spread its ugly teeth again. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you my thoughts a little bit later on that one. So let's go to the next screen. Uh, weekly, I don't want to go through that. I got some updates through that. The stock market was down 586. Actually, the stock market ended up today. And again, the main reason is the Fed is stepping in. The Fed is controlling everything right now. If the Fed wasn't doing anything, I, I mean, th this could be a bloodbath. But they're stabilizing the markets. But again, what I don't understand is why they're buying corporate bonds and what corporations are they buying? That's that's the thing that kind of gets me on this. Uh, and then you start to seeing this this, this the uh, the Dow starting to stabilize. Um, and then mortgage-backed securities were down eight. This was at noon, and then they really didn't budge. But the stock market started coming back. So that's what we saw there. Economic news for the the week: really nothing going on. Uh, Federal Chair, uh, Chairman Powell, he, he's the basically the head person of the Federal Reserve. He's going to talk tomorrow at 9. That could potentially move the market somewhat, what he says. I don't think he's really going to say anything that's going to jeopardize anything in the markets. Because as of last week, we, you, if you paid attention, last Thursday I posted some information. And we basically went over the verbiage exactly what the Federal Reserve came out and said. And there should be no surprises there. He also comes out on Wednesday and, and talks. But you have building starts, permits, and all this other stuff. None of this stuff is going to surprise the market. Um, let's go to the news for the day. Mortgage rates, they were up a tick, as we see right here, up a tick today, but they're still near all time, all time lows. Okay, so let's go over to the chart. Again, there's really no movement here, which we like. Um, basically, you know, volatility is the enemy. Um, and, you know, we really don't have any volatility right now. So again, the Fed, are, the Fed is doing a fantastic job on what they're doing when they step in and they're trying to stabilize the market, and they did a wonderful job there. Uh, real estate news, basically a lot of the forbearance is starting to come back. I think people are realizing, oh boy, this wasn't the best thing since sliced bread, and a lot of people are starting to ease back on that because they're seeing it's not the greatest thing in the world there. Um, some of the, the news coming out right now is the coronavirus is starting to you know, spread its ugly head again in many states. And I think we have that on the wrap up. Let's see if we do here. It should be mentioned in uh, some headline news. I don't know. It's not there. But the coronavirus is starting to impact a lot of the southern states uh, in a big way right now. And, you know, my, my take on that is, uh, here, I'll just say it. We quarantined everybody, basically, and, and let's say a third of the, the country got the coronavirus. Um, we open up the market, or we open up everything again. You know, I, you know, when the factors come out, I don't think it's going to be as devastating. The, the media loves this stuff. They love pushing this agenda where, oh my goodness, the world's coming to an end. Here, let me just give you some tidbits on what I, I've been doing some studying on this, and here's what I come across. So a lot of what the media is portraying, there, there's two variations of verbiage that they're coming out with. One verbiage says people that die with coronavirus 
okay? And then the other segment is people that are dying of COVID. Sorry, it's getting dark here. Um, if you take out the of and have it with, there's a drop in three different studies of over 25% drop of the people who die with coronavirus. One example that came out said that there was a person that committed suicide. That person had the, the virus. So it went down that he died with coronavirus and it went into the statistics. That's absurd. Um, so when you take out that with and make it of, there's a 25% in three different cases, 25% drop in the number of deaths. So let's get back to it. Um, so the charts are this. We go over to, let's look at the news that happened today, and you're going to see this. It might refresh, but here we go. Treasuries came off their lows. Um, why? After the, the Fed came out and said they're going to start to buy corporate bonds. Um, again, I don't get it, and I, what I'll do is I'll do some studying on this uh, tomorrow, and I'll get back with you. There's also some things that I want to really come out with tomorrow and show you when the Federal Reserve came out with their minutes last time, it was unanimous, basically unanimous, um, that they said they are not going to do anything with uh, interest rates in the in the probably the, this year. Um, and it was unanimous. And that very, very rarely happens, and I'll give you a report on that. It's an inside uh, report that we all follow, and I'll share that with you tomorrow. And tomorrow is also the rate update day where we go compare rates with me versus all over the country. So if there's some rates that you want me to go over for you, please click down below and put in your comments to say, Dan, what is your FHA rates compared to X? What is your 3% down program compared to X? And we're going to go over all things. I apologize. It's getting dark. So I am going to sign off. So if I could be of any help to you, let me go and show you my new website. I think it's fantastic. I put some a lot of time into this. So you go to the rateupdate.com and you click that. And this pops up. And you can pick loan officers right here. If you're watching me on here, just pick me. This is me, Dan Frio. If you'd like to reach me personally, give me a call at 844-775-5626 right here. Or you can shoot me an email at dfrio. That's F-R-I-O at preferredrate.com. So that's dfrio at preferredrate.com. What I have a lot of people doing are those that are in the mortgage process right now. If you're buying or refinancing, send me a copy of your what we call the loan estimate. It goes through the rate, the loan amount, and all the fees that are involved in that loan. I will come back with you and I'll scribble all through it. And I'll either say, God bless you, take it, sign tomorrow, and get it as quick as you can. Or, probably 90% of the time, I'm going to come back and I'm going to have either a lower rate, lower fees, or all the above, lower rate and lower fees. So I'd love to help you out. If you have not started anything yet and you're like, what would this do for me if I refinanced? Shoot me a copy of your mortgage statement. On there, it'll give me your name, your address, and the mortgage balance. From your address, I'll pull up all kind of research that I do on the home value. So I got your value with the, what you owe on the house. The only thing I'm missing basically is your credit score. So if you would just give me an idea what your credit score is. If you don't know it, you can go to creditscoresandmore.com. Click step one, complete that whole thing and tell me what that credit score is. It's not a hard hit to your credit and it'll give me an idea what your credit score is going to be so I can give you a rate and give you an idea where what your payments would be and how much you would save. So again, I hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe down below. Please leave a comment. Let me know some scenarios on uh, mortgage rates that you want me to go over with you. I'll also go over the fees and uh, so we can break it all down so there's no surprises. So take care. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.